Welcome to Disambiguation. I'm your host, Michael Fawcett. Each week, we interview experts in AI, generative AI, and business automation to help business leaders understand how to use these tools for the biggest business impact. In our show today, we look at automation as a competitive advantage. I'm joined by Jackie Jones, founder and CEO of Way We Do. Jackie, welcome. Hi, Michael. Good to see you again. Yeah, you as well. Uh, and thank you for uh, for jumping on. I know it's uh, the middle of the night for you, so much appreciated. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, can you uh, could you just do a quick introduction and then tell us a little bit about why you founded Way We Do and what you guys do? Certainly. Uh, so I'm the, the co-founder and CEO of Way We Do. And, and actually before Way We Do, um, we had a, um, another company called Keyword Intent, and that was a, a do-it-yourself SEO software platform. Mm. Um, and at that time, we had our own problem of onboarding new employees and getting them up to speed um, and getting them productive um, in their roles. Uh, so we were looking for solutions on the market to essentially starting with documenting procedure and process to help new employees um, get to understand um, their roles and responsibilities. And we're looking at wikis and WordPress and we weren't really happy with those solutions. So we decided to solve that problem for ourselves and then found that other businesses had exactly the same problem. Um, so we launched Way We Do in 2013 and have been building upon that um, ever since. Um, within about two or three years, um, we kind of ditched and pivoted um, to, um, uh, to Way We Do. So we were focusing on it full time um, from that point onwards. Great. Um, <clears throat> so when you when you think about process automation and, and businesses today, like what, what are the biggest challenges that you see um, companies coming to you for and and how does you know, how does process automation and BPM uh, aim to solve that? Certainly. Um, one of the biggest challenges um, is inconsistency. So um, the, the way that the company or business operates is operating in an inconsistent manner in the way that they deliver their products and services um, to their clients. Um, those inconsistencies can lead to mistakes and rework, um, uh, dissatisfaction by um, customers. Um, and and I guess um, that, that's a problem that process management um, solves. Um, automation comes into play when mm. team members are working on low value task. And really we want them to be working on high value task. So you're getting more out of um, a high cost um, a human resource. Um, and, and any task that's um, low value, um, we want to automate um, where possible. Mm. Um, another challenge is speed to market. So um, if we're, uh, if you know, businesses are bogged down by a lot of um, low value tasks, then it's going to mm. slow the, the business down. And so they're looking to um, process automation and process management to help speed up the way that they deliver their products and services. Mm. Um, and I think um, another reason is um, just lack of um, skilled um, uh, people or skilled staff. Um, so when you're lacking human resources and you're in a, t a tight job market, mm. um, it's really hard to find um people to fill necessary roles. And, and so looking towards automation can help um, fill those gaps. And of a, a force multiplier for, for companies that are having resource uh, challenges. Yeah, that makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, you, you know, we, <clears throat> we talked about BPM and automation for quite a while, but I think we do it mostly in the context of big business, large enterprise, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm curious because I know that um, you work with a lot of small and medium businesses. So how, how should they think about process management and automation or, or should they and, and why? I believe that every business should consider process management and um, automation, and that's because of the um, opportunities it provides and the challenges um, that we just discussed. Um, a large business is really um, can often just be a collection of small um, businesses, or it right. once was a small business and it has um, scaled and, and grown into a larger um, one. So, uh, so definitely. Uh, 
automation and process automate, um, process management um, offers the opportunity for small businesses to grow and scale themselves. And that starts mm -hmm. with um, standardizing um, processes um, to minimize, minimize waste um, in a business um, to help you create predictable results and, and the output um, that has a real monetary value. And by understanding uh, that standardized process, you can start to examine the steps of the process that can be improved upon. And one of those improvements is um, automation, uh, which can be programmatic or it could be AI, um, so that you can reduce errors and make the process faster and easier. Mm -hmm. So, so it really does give them the capability to appear much bigger in a marketplace than they would otherwise. Absolutely. So um, definitely it actually uh, just cuts down those, um, you know, barriers to entry for um, smaller businesses um, entering into market or, you know, growing and competing mm -hmm. with larger um, organisations as well. And of yeah. course, um, um, ultimately, uh, businesses... Uh, can develop a competitive edge, you know, when they are working um, or competing against um, other organisations or larger um, businesses. Um, and it ultimately helps provide a better product and service to customers faster um, than their customers, mm -hmm. um, which can lead to lower cost um, for the business as well as higher margins um, for hopefully both them um, and um, th their clients. Mm -hmm. um, automation provides uh, reliability and predictability, um, which is what every business um, owner wants. So it minimizes risk um, in the business business. Um, and yeah, so, so I think um, that there's a lot of reasons why um, you would want to implement automation and um, mm -hmm. process management in order to compete um, with um, larger organizations and your direct competitors. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I, I was talking to uh, uh, interviewing the head of technical support the other day of a software company, and we, we were talking about automation in a project that he had just done. And mm. he had a really interesting point because, you know, I think sometimes when we think of automation in the customer support area, particularly we're talking about deflection and also maybe reducing the number of agents. But, but his take was that, in fact, what he had done is... Uh, because he'd freed up so much time of those agents dealing with mundane sort of questions, routine questions, he could actually have them spend more time building relationships with um, customers as they did interact over more complex sort of issues. So I thought that was a, a really unique way to think about the opportunity isn't, you know, isn't necessarily reducing costs. It might actually be improving experience, which has a much broader impact on your business. Absolutely. So it's about moving your your people resources into areas that really matter. So really critical, um, mission critical areas um, of the business. Mm. And, and of course, one of those is building relationships um, with sure. um, other people, with customers, suppliers, um, so that uh, you can grow that business um, mm. together, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so in this um, you know, when we look at this, and, and I can see there's a lot of opportunity for competitive advantage using this type of technology, but but I'm curious, is it more pronounced in certain industries? Like, are there, uh, are there vertical takes on this where it is more or less valuable, perhaps? Um, I think um, process management and automation will impact um, every industry, and particularly as we move um, into the era um, of AI. Um, at Way We Do, we work with a lot of um, business um, service um, or professional service firms like mm. accountants, um, lawyers, um, finance, insurance, um, and then other industries like um, construction, education, health and mm. um, technology. And what I find is that um, small businesses, they may start with very simple um, automations, um, mm. such as the handoff of um, one step of a process from one person um, to another person who will complete the next step um, in that um, process. Mm. Um, and, and that helps to reduce noise um, in terms of sending email, <laughs> reduces the clutter mm. um, within your email inbox. Um, and just ensure um, that information doesn't get lost um, within, um, you know, a noisy inbox. Um, another um, simple automation is the running of a process based upon triggers. Um, and that could be mm. 
um, using date schedules um, when a form is submitted, when a field is changed within a CRM um, application um, or a signing um, of a document. And, and, and that in turn can run processes like um, setting data to a CRM or a database, um, starting a new client or a new employee onboarding process or running an investigation process, for example, which will be yeah. completed by either a human, a person, um, or um, a bot or an agent, um, uh, if, if that's required. Um, and then, of course, it then can move into more sophisticated um, automations. So, um, it, um, dynamic generation of documents, mm. um, um, email generation, um, and then, of course, um, with uh, AI, um, that can also automate um, more tasks in independently uh, mm. without a human being involved. So it's full um, independent automation. Um, but then some of those automations could be partial automations where a human is involved and um, uh, to make the final decision when information goes out, for example. Mm. I mean, I like to think of this as decision intelligence. And I, I know I talked to mm -hmm. you about this a little bit before. I think it's a, an interesting opportunity for businesses. And and part of that is, um, you know, what are the things I can automate and what makes sense to automate? But then there's also, as you mentioned, and I think this is important to note, that it's not taking away humans from this. There are certainly things that you want a human to oversee. And there are mm -hmm. things that you want a human to actually be in the loop and, you know, make that final decision. But all of these things together really give you a, a, an opportunity to, to reduce cost and, and also, you know, grow your footprint because of the capabilities to go beyond the number of resources that you currently have. Yes, um, absolutely. And uh, um, however, I do believe that um, there will be some jobs that will be eliminated. There'll be jobs that um, will, will simply just be enhanced and mm. um, an automation and AI will be um, a huge contributor to the work um, that you do. Sure. Um, and then there's going to be new jobs um, that, um, mm. that will be generated from the automations that we put in place. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> I think that's the realistic view. And I, I hear people kind of try to sugarcoat, oh, you know, we don't believe this is going to be any. But, but I think, you know, you have to look at it as if there are some jobs that are going to need to be reskilled, some people that need to be trained and, and taught to, to operate in some different fashion, because that level of automation certainly does, you know, change the tasks that you want those resources to do, if nothing else, right? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. and so organisations, um, as you said, need to spend more time um, training th their team and um, and being open um, to using AI as well. So I think that, that there is a lot of fear um, at the moment. So, uh, so I think we need to reduce that fear and really embrace um, the opportunity that automation and AI mm -hmm. um, can provide to us. Sure. Well, so, so if I'm a company and I'm thinking about doing this, um, you know, process automation, um, but where do I start? I mean, what, what should leaders look for as they start to prioritize these different initiatives and projects in their company? Yeah, I think it comes to, uh, down to the goals and objectives um, within um, the, the organisation. And a lot of those are centred around decreasing pain points um, in the organisation or increasing mm. gains. And, and it's also about the, um, the, the risk appetite of the organisation and their ability to invest. Mm. Um, so, of course, one of the areas that you would look at is repetitive tasks, um, which have um, a high cost to the business um, or potentially an opportunity cost. So if your people are spending a lot of time doing data entry, um, uh, such as entering receipts um, or downloading bank feeds and up <laughs> uploading it manually, then right. that time is better um, served um, elsewhere on a high value um, task. Mm -hmm. Um, another area is looking at where mistakes are happening in the business, um, and that's um, that has an impact um, on um, health and safety of um, of employees or um, people or customers. Um, it could be compliance issues um, or um, reputation um, issues. Mm -hmm. So that's another area where we can start to use automation to reduce those mistakes um, from happening. And also, um, for just looking at the lens of um, increasing gains um, within the business, is also what do you want to innovate and what do you mm. want to become a market leader um, in? And that's where automation and AI can really mm. start to change um, your business and the, the way that and the business models um, that your business operates in. Right. 
Yeah, it seems like the, from what you just described, there's sort of two directions here. I mean, you could say, here are all these simple things that I know I can remove off the plate of my resources so they can do more. And that's, you know, that's automation of the of the routine, mundane, whatever we want to call it, right? But then on the other side, something you, you talk about is how does this tie to business strategy? How does this make me more competitive, how more innovative, whatever the right thing is for that business? And that's really interesting because it does move out of this land of just can I get rid of some of these things that I don't want people doing into the how do I use this to grow my business and be more competitive which is you know of great strategic value absolutely and I'm sure there'll be some business owners thinking great I can get rid of an employee and save some cost <laughs> yeah and, and I think that's the wrong that's the wrong way um, yeah. to think about this opportunity so yeah. um so because we can do so much more with it yeah. And, and I mean, that's that's a great point. Right. Where do I focus? Well, I you know, if I can use something that makes me more competitive or, or adds to my business strategy that has overall much broader impact than, oh, I got rid of one person who was doing data entry. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, so I know when you guys go in, you you spend a lot of time way way we do. You emphasize the importance of um, standard operating procedures, and mm -hmm. I, we kind of talked about these in business for forever. But I don't know that I've talked about them in the context of automation and software. Yes. Um, so I'm curious, how does that affect daily workflows? And then, how do you you know how does this make the 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 automation more effective? Yes. So um, a lot of our um, customers, they um, use Way We Do to help standardize um, the processes um, within their business, mm -hmm. uh, which is mostly um, for humans um, to um, to learn the process and um, yeah. implement. Um, however, um, automation really depends on st um, standardized processes. Mm -hmm. So before you do any automation, the best place to start um, is with um, mapping out um, your processes. So creating the flow charts, understanding what the flow of that um, process is. Mm -hmm. um, another um, item is uh, compliance and quality control. So uh, we can use such use automation and AI to uh, to do a quality check um, of the work mm. that is being um, implemented by our teams and for it to um, pick out or alert you when um, th those mistakes um, do occur and then that mm. can be escalated to a manager or someone on the team um, to review. Um, another um, area, the importance of um, standard operating procedures and mapping out your processes is about validation um, of the automation. Um, so we need to ensure from a responsible AI practice that the process and the automation is working um, as um, intended. Mm. Also, um, I think um, as the AI has become more intelligent um, over time and more reliable and and, that, and the, the trust um, increases, um, those procedures also provide a source of um, instructions um, to the AI. And then you'll be able to choose um, which parts of the process or all of the process um, for that um, AI um, or automation um, to implement. Mm -hmm. So that's really the foundation of everything else that you're doing. You're, you define these um, standard operating processes, and then you're building off of them, both from an <clears throat> automation standpoint and also from uh, general business improvement, I assume. So there's some amount of improving the process as I'm actually laying this out and documenting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think sometimes um, uh, people... I mean, it's a good idea to document the way um, or your as-is um, process. So what are you doing today? And then you standardise it. Yeah. Um, so sometimes people will go into just reinventing the, the process um, immediately and sometimes it then becomes a new, a brand new process mm. and there can be um, an element of risk um, associated with that if you're automating that immediately um, without um, testing the process in a manual way first to ensure that you're getting mm. the, the types of results that you're looking for. So there's a <clears throat> there's a bit of checksum in there as well that I yes. I use this to to establish that what I'm doing is the same when it's humans versus when it's automated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> so when when companies go into this, I mean, this could be a pretty big uh, effort because obviously we have lots of processes. If you're a business, mm -hmm. right? So what are what kind of challenges do companies face when they're when they're trying to implement process automation, and how do they deal with those? How do they how do they mitigate those um, challenges? 
Okay, so th there's a number of um, challenges. Um, uh, so, uh, so one of them is um, uh, setting and, and forgetting <laughs> an automation. So I've seen mm -hmm. organisations do that. They set up an automation and then forget that it's actually running and that no person is overseeing <laughs> that particular Oops. process. <laughs> and it just leads to um, additional, um, I guess, um, data being um, generated, um, takes up more space, um, et cetera. Um, and also um, automations that are not um, documented. So people actually don't know how the um, automation works. So it's really important um, that it's um, documented so you can refer back to it, particularly when you need to validate it. Um, before I spoke about um, new processes that um, people are jumping in straight away to automate a process before before even understanding mm. how that the flow of it would work in a in a manual um, way to ensure that it is the right process um, for the business. Um, and then I think um, just overcomplicating automation, so just making them bigger than, than her, rather than uh, maybe just starting um, small and then building upon it um, um, over time. Um, so. If you are overcomplicating um, a process or overcomplicating an automation, there's a high risk um, that things um, can go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, another um, a, a challenge would be not having APIs um, uh, in your own business for um, uh, integrations or automated tools or mm -hmm. Um, AI to access data um, or data not being available. So it's really important that um, your data um, it, it can be structured or it's available um, in a secure way for um, API um, um, APIs to access. Sure. Um, although I think um, there will be opportunity um, with um, AI vision, for example, um, mm -hmm. to see what is happening on screen as well, but we're not there sure. yet um, with yeah. that. Well, it, it's it's interesting because um, you know you you can your your documenting process, which I think is really important, but you also have this other piece of that, and that's the data. And and I, I know when I when I work with companies, often that's the place that I'll tell them to start is trying to mm. get that integrated data picture, so that they can in fact do you know automation in an effective way, in a safe way. Uh, yes. with, with the right data and using the right data for the right process and the right things. So it sounds like there's two sort of evolutions here. One more of a technical, how do I have the data and the data quality and data infrastructure, but then also how do I map out these processes and make sure that I could execute these in a, you know, in a, in a way with a human that's effective and then it could be automated in, in some ways, part, partially or, or fully. Right. Yes, um, and, and there's probably a third element there, and that is um, uh, security, so information mm -hmm. security. Um, I think um, what's interesting about data is that, um, particularly with smaller organisations, they don't realise that data is an asset um, mm -hmm. that um, has value <laughs> yeah. um, associated with it. Mm -hmm. So it really needs to be um, protected. So putting in security measures to protect the data, understanding who has access to it, and um, and particularly tools, um, and um, and but you know, and as new AI um, agents and tools um, and automation tools become available, that we need to do our due diligence to ensure that uh, they are the right suppliers and they will protect the data assets um, that mm. you know belong to our companies. Sure, I mean there's there's also some some you know risk depending on where you are. Uh, mm. uh, privacy regulations if you're especially if you're dealing with customer data or prospect data, uh, yes. and how do you protect that PII as it as you're you know. It using that in in those different parts of the process, right? Absolutely, um, yeah, th th that's um, absolutely vital. So, um, so when you implement, um, so one of the things that we do at Way we do is um, help organisations implement an information um, security management system, and which mm. is mostly around policies and procedures and the processes around the way that you manage um, uh, uh, information security or cyber security in your organization. Mm -hmm. So you, so regulations is definitely one part um, of the of that puzzle that you need to review and understand um, what, what are your requirements and obligations to protect um, customer data. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that that that's critical. And I mean, in 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 you know, in the EU, EU for example, you certainly have to be aware of GDPR. And that's in the right. US, the, a few states have unique regulations that are different from the overall national picture. And yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so 
as as the automation you know continues to evolve and and we've seen i mean obviously a lot of uh of the evolution from from just from introducing the new you know ai technologies and generative ai and other things over the last couple mm. of years um how do you see and we've talked a little bit about humans but how do you see the role of the human employee shifting or or maybe it doesn't and then you know skills what 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 can we tell the listeners, uh, they need to be focused on when they're thinking about building skills for their, you know, careers in an automated or a more more automated workplace. Well, what I'm hoping, <laughs> I've been <laughs> praying for this for, the, for this for the last twenty years. <laughs> it seems like life gets faster and faster, doesn't it? Um, mm. uh, that hopefully. Um, and you know that AI and automation will actually give us more time, so we can focus on mm. more meaningful um, and um, you know and work where we have to. It's more deep work, so we because everyone's just working so fast and we're just jumping mm. from task to task, and so to get that time back to focus on something more deeply, I think is really important, not only for the business mm. but also for people um, personally. Um, and so some of those skills uh, I think that we need to bring back and um, develop um, further um, is critical thinking skills. Um, so knowing how to inspect the work um, of an AI or an automation to know um, that it is um, correct. Um, I think it's also the ability to ask um, good questions and having the, the creativity to engage and get the most um, from technology um, as well. And not just accepting you know, what, what's been given to you, being able to really interrogate <laughs> um, that AI um, to know um, how we can get different answers and responses um, from it and, mm -hmm. and for it to actually match the requirements of the work that we need to um, implement. Um, and, I, and I guess the last thing is um, just overcoming fear, because um, I know today a, a lot of people, and it's people of all ages, um, that um, you know, many people have a fear of technology and, and so just even use um, uh, digital um, interfaces or having basic digital skills. Um, so th there's a large population of people still lacking um, in, in those areas. And I'm hoping um, that with, um, as we bring um, on new AI and chatbots, et cetera, that the interfaces are gonna be much more human friendly um, so mm. that it will be easier um, for the average person to um, sure. interact with and engage with. Um, but I, but we need to become really comfortable um, with technology. Sure. That, uh, that's, that seems like a, a, a reasonable way to focus. If you're trying to learn skills, you know, how do I, how do I use generative AI? What, what, you know, just like search used to be a skill. Now we need a, a need prompting, capabilities to understand kind of how some of these things work. And, you know, I was, I was listening to um, the CEO of a, of a tech company, larger tech company not long ago, talking about how they were experimenting with AI in their uh, research and development and coding. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes. one of the things he said, and I, I, and I'm just, this is just an example, but I, but the more I thought about this, the more I could see how this is important when you think about any role um, and how that role is going to shift. I mean, his, his contention was that because of the AI coding capabilities are getting so much better that the role of the developer, they don't go away, of course, because you still have to have them to, to mm -hmm. check things and design things, but that their role shifts that, that instead of just, you know, worrying about the execution of that code to match whatever, you know, was laid out for them by the product team. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, I need a, to be a conceptual modeler as a developer. I need to be, it's a different skill set, in other words. So I, somebody has to design and, and be able to step back a level and lay things out so that the, that the AI can do the thing you want it to do. And I assume that's true across a lot of, of, of skills that, that you're, you're, you're kind of elevating those skills to understand how a process is, is, is works and how it can be improved. And, you know, so it's, it's almost conceptual there too. Um, absolutely. Um, I, I know um, with our programming team, uh, I mean, they're using Copilot and um, tools like yeah. that to speed up the, um, the, 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 develop, the, the development process. Um, but just some of the comments that they get back and particularly from the senior um, de developers, um, that what's actually being re returned isn't always what they want <laughs> to yeah. be um, returned. So, so you still need, at this point in time, at least, you need to have a really good understanding of 
um, coding, what clean code is, and ensuring that you're not building technical debt um, into um, mm. the application. So, um, so you still need to have expert um, knowledge, um, sure. you know, as a human being, and um, and that applies to other areas as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and and really, then, if I'm thinking about in the in the near term, because I mean, obviously, the tools will improve over time as well. But especially mm -hmm. in the near term, if I'm trying to do something for my career, I really do want to. Uh, it's it's really is an elevation. It's a I can I need to be uh, I need to know more about these tools and more about the process and more about my job because yes. I have to be able to not just execute. I have to be able to check something else that's executing as well. Uh, absolutely. And and mm -hmm. so therefore, employers um, and managers need to give their team time um, to um, to sp spend time learning and experimenting mm -hmm. with AI sure. so they get to understand those tools. So that's um, one of the best ways that employers can support their team uh, with, mm -hmm. um, you know, embracing um, this type of technology. Mm. And and I would think too that this is and I've I've talked to a lot of uh, people in uh, in higher education in the U.S. about some of these questions too because mm -hmm. we certainly have seen a big blowback in, in some of the institutions about oh we we're not going to allow the students to do this use these do that and then some have really embraced them and to me it seems like if I'm coming out of university. I want to be prepared to use all these technologies. I, I don't want, you know, yes, I need a foundation, but I also need to be able to use these advanced technologies and techniques in my work, or I'm not really going to be competitive with the other graduates as I, as I come back into the workforce. Absolutely. And I think um, what the education system is really talking about is uh, fact-checking and <laughs> not plagiarizing and um, yeah. and then putting some of your own thought um, into um, what is being generated. Yeah. Um, but certainly, I think the education department and schools and universities, they need to be embracing AI. Yeah. And I think um, that they will, because I know um, in Queensland here that the education department um, is launching its own chatbot. And mm -hmm. even though there have been some rules around not using AI um, um, in, in schools. So so initially yeah. there was fear, uh, a yeah. lot of fear. Um, and then now I think they're wanting, they, they know they can't hide from it. They have to embrace it. It's, um, it's, it's like it's here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess, um, um, they want to do that in a controlled way. So, yeah. so they'll be introducing new tools over time and it'll be interesting to see what they release um, and how that goes. But I'm sure it'll be mm. positive for, for everyone involved. Yeah. And, and there'll be challenges and learnings along the way. So, <laughs> so that will happen. We all need to be prepared for that. Um, but yeah. ultimately, overall, it's going to be much better um, for our people. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I was I did a show, one of my other shows that I'm involved with, it's a live show, and I had a couple of mm -hmm. professors, one department head and 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 also a consultant that works with higher ed on and we were talking about, and this was last summer, I think we were talking about AI and the use of AI. And and it and it was funny when we first started prepping for the show, the department head that was involved was adamantly against using any AI in the yes. in the classroom. But over the period of a few meetings as we were kind of laying things out and talking about it, um, she realized that there were huge advantages for her professors, for her instructors to use AI mm. as well. And once she started to think about the value there, she realized that in fact, not exposing those students to it in some way oh, was, was not, completing their education. Like that was falling short. Absolutely. That, that's, it is falling short. It's, it's, it's being detrimental to their learning and progress and yeah. prepping them for, for the future. So it's absolutely necessary that yeah. they embrace AI. Yeah, makes sense. Well, so we, we talked a lot about kind of how some of these things happen, but can you give us some uh, stories around successes? Like what, what are some of the, some of your customers doing uh, and how, you know, how has it improved their business? Yeah, um, so some of our co customers have really complex um, processes, but it, it seems that nearly every business has um, yeah. some form of com complex um, process. Um, and for um, and, and what is meant by complex is that, that there could be a process with many um, steps involved, mm -hmm. and it's really hard for people to remember um, everything mm -hmm. that they need to do. So 
Um, so one such firm I can think of is an accounting firm um, here in Australia. They've got about a, approximately 90 um, people um, on their team. Mm. And they had some issues where they were um, uh, um, out of compliance um, with some of the work um, mm. that they were doing from a, um, a tax um, perspective. So they implemented Way We Do to help them ensure that they, uh, the team wasn't forgetting um, what they needed to do to ensure that mm. things were not falling through the cracks. And then they were just using some automations to um, to start um, processes and mm -hmm. um, and do the handoff from one person to another. So just those simple automations that I, I spoke about um, before. Um, they are now starting to explore AI and um, how that um, integrates with the way we do um, um, as well. Mm. Um, the other thing um, that we've uh, another automation tool that we've implemented recently um, is uh, a tool called, that we call Instant Flowcharts and it's a way for um, businesses mm. to simply just list steps of a process and it then automatically turns it into a um, a flow chart, a, um, a, a, mm. a yeah, flow chart, a swim lane diagram. And and so a lot of people, they don't like <laughs> creating flow charts. <laughs> and uh, so we've actually have done that in a very simple way. And so, uh, so a lot of the businesses that we're working with, um, they've been quite excited um, to use um, that particular tool. Mm. Um, and then um, we've also have some AI um, tools um, in way we do, uh, which policy um, and procedure and process content, um, it, AI um, with content generation lends itself um, to that. Mm -hmm. um, we have given um, some some basic tools really just to uh, for them for the uh, the editor to list um, steps of the process or instructions um, or you know write a procedure, um, and all they have to do is write it as a, um, as a list or a bullet point um, uh, form and then highlight it and then turns it into paragraphs um, of text and writes it in a professional mm. way. So that's really useful um, as, as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah, people that, are cre creating procedure and, and policy faster um, than before. Mm. No, that's great. And and th those are those are good examples. I appreciate that. And I think that helps people get a little better uh, context for it as they start to think about, you know, how would I use it in my business and, and, um, and, and should I, right? Um, well, that, that's all the time we have today. But before I let you go, uh, the one thing that I always ask everybody, and so um, I'd love to, to get your take on this, but could you recommend somebody for the audience, you know, thought leader, an author, somebody that you think would, um, you know, would be a benefit to them and um, that they, you know, that they could check out on their own? Certainly. So I subscribe to an email newsletter, um, which... Um, Nice. Uh, uh, which I receive, I think it's not daily, but maybe it comes through um, weekly to every few days or so. And and it's a, um, a, a VC named Thomas Tungas. And uh, so he's a VC and and, he, and his blog posts um, focus upon um, technology um, businesses. And in recent uh, months, he's been talking a lot about AI um, as well. So what I really like about him is that he's a, a thought leader and he just um, just has um, really considers um, what the technology is and how what impact it's going to have on businesses and who are the leaders in the market and what is the, the commercial side of running those businesses um, from an AI mm. um, perspective. Hmm. Oh, great, great recommendation, and and I'll uh, put that in the uh, in the show notes for everybody so they can uh, can check it out. Yes. Uh, so so Jackie, really appreciate it. Great conversation. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Michael. You have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye. And that's the show for this week. Thank you all for joining. Remember to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a five-star rating on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform to help others find the show. For more on AI and other software research reports, briefs, and blog posts, check out arianresearch.com. If you have AI, generative AI, or business automation expertise, either as a provider or as an end user, email your information to disambiguation at arianresearch.com, and we'll see if we can get you on as a guest. Don't forget to join us next week. Disambiguation is an Arian Research production. I'm Michael Fawcett, and this is the Disambiguation Podcast.